organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, the Vice President of China visited an old friend in the Hawkeye State today for the first time since 1985. To find out why he made the trek halfway around the world. Plus, we'll look at one University of Iowa student who has a bit more on her plate than just her schoolwork. And in sports, we preview the Big Ten Women's Swimming Tournament, which kicked off today at the Campus Recreation and Wellness Center. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. From Studio 151, your television news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan, this is Daily Iowan TV. Thanks for tuning in to your Wednesday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Brad Maxwell. And I'm Allie Wright. Chinese Vice President Xi Jinping visited Muscatine, Iowa today as a part of his tour through the United States. Xi, who has held a personal relationship with Iowa Governor Terry Branstad since they met during a visit in 1985, is visiting the state in order to build closer ties with Iowa's agricultural industry. Xi is also visiting the state to learn more about farm technology. The governor felt that this trip was not only beneficial for Xi, but also all Iowa. Personal relationships are really important to the Chinese people. Having this kind of relationship with the next leader of China, I think is very helpful to the state of Iowa. Check out Thursday's print edition of the Daily Iowan for a more in-depth look at Xi's visit to Iowa. The University of Iowa's Mock Trial Club won its regional tournament for the second year in a row in Kansas City last weekend. Since the club's founding in 1991, it has won more than 30 individual awards, 14 top place finishes, and four tournament championships. The club will tra travel to St. Louis March 16th through the 18th to complete, compete for a chance to go to the national championship. Anyone can, can learn about American culture through a textbook. Daily Iowan TV's Josh Bolander expects, explains why some young women are getting a more unique look at the states. Tens of thousands of students spend their lives on the University of Iowa campus every day. A typical routine consists of catching buses, making quick trips to the library, and yes, even walking to a few classes. Nicole Sturm's life in Iowa City goes a little bit differently. Instead of taking on exams, she wrestles car seats. She's traded in textbooks for picture books. And cooking no longer means fending for herself. That's because Sturm is part of the Cultural Care All Pair program in Iowa City and Coralville. We are about 12 or 13 au pairs here in Iowa City and Muscatine and Bettner. Most of the au pairs involved in the program are from Germany or Austria, but countries from South and Central America are involved in cultural care as well. Thanks for the game. While the transition to the states and child care may take time to adjust to, they are often welcomed by their host families where their expectations are made clear. Um, they have to, you know, help out uh, around the house like any adult member of the household would, but otherwise just kind of be a member of the family. The program benefits the host families as well. It's just the flexibility and just the cultural exchange that's uh, part of the program too. We've enjoyed all that. For thousands of UI students, learning about life means attending classrooms like the ones directly over my shoulder. But for these few au pairs, living in Iowa City means learning about life in a more unique way. Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV. While some might think au pairs are for the fabulously wealthy, Goers calls the cost relationship between an au pair and daycare a wash. A Western Iowa woman is facing 93 counts of animal neglect. 44-year-old Mary Broderson is facing charges after authorities seized 87 dogs and one cat from a rural farm near Keon. The carcasses of five dead animals were also discovered when authorities searched the farm on January 25th. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV, Porn on Valentine's Day? It's no longer just a thing for single guys. Coming up tonight on Daily Iowan TV, find out why the Iowa women's basketball team is in a much different place now than they were a few weeks ago. But first, let's check in with Mariel Kone to get a look at your weather forecast. And Mariel, we saw snow earlier in the week, but now most of it's gone. Can we expect similar temps? 
Yes, Brad, similar temps are hovering around 40 degrees with sunny skies throughout the weekend, so the snow that hasn't melted should be gone soon. And tomorrow morning, we'll have 34 degrees around 10 a.m. with mostly sunny skies. Heading into the afternoon, it won't be quite as warm as today, but we'll still see highs around 37 degrees. And tomorrow night, the temperatures will dip below freezing at 31 degrees with clear skies. Looking to the extended forecast, expect highs around 40 degrees, like I noted earlier, and sunny skies until next Tuesday when there's a potential for a rain-snow mix. That's a look at your weather forecast, Brad and Allie. Back to you. This Valentine's Day brought different options for students, and of those alternatives, one was a pornographic film. Despite the controversy of pornographic films last year, this did not stop the Bijou Cinema from showing underwater love. Programming, programming director of Bijou tells us what makes this pornographic film different than the one shown in the past. We have an alternative Valentine's Day date, so instead of just a romantic comedy, we're showing something that's a little different. And um, this particular film has some porn, but it's also a musical. Um, it's a film that's uh, in Japanese, so we have a few different things going on with the film. One of the reasons this film was shown was not only to inform the public, but also to entertain. And hopefully couples will have similar options for next year's Valentine's Day. The Iowa House has approved a measure that will put an additional $6.5 million into the Corrections Department this year. The money will be used to pay the current prison staff, avoiding layoffs. The measure, which isn't expected to create any new jobs, passed with a 96-0 to 0 vote. The Iowa Senate passed a similar measure calling for $8.5 million, and the two chambers must come to an agreement before it will be sent to Governor Terry Branstad. And now we'll take a look at some of the top headlines from around the world. The FCC has approved new rules to better protect people from robocalls. Under the new guidelines, telemarketers need customers' written permission to make autom automated calls, even if they have existing relationships with them. The guidelines also require the robocalls to offer the option to opt out of future calls. And a man was shot dead while holding an infant in Arizona this week after police received a call from his neighbors that he threatened them with a gun. Police said the man came out of his house with the infant when they arrived, and they shot him for fear of their own lives and the life of the infant. The infant was not hurt. At least 272 prisoners have been pronounced dead following a prison fire in Honduras today. Officials say a short circuit or mattress fire may have sparked the, the blaze, but the cause of the fire remains under investigation. The fire is the third fatal prison fire on record in recent years. And if you were over at the Campus Recreation and Wellness Center today, you may have noticed that it was more bustling than usual. That's because Iowa is hosting the Big Ten Women's Swim Tournament. Let's go to Alicia Deniers for more information about that and your Hawkeye Sports update. Thanks, guys. The Big Ten Women's Swimming Championships begin this week, and the University of Iowa, with its brand new rec center, will play host. The championships begin tonight and end February 18th, followed by the men's championships, which begin the 22nd and end the 25th. This is the first time in more than 20 years that the University of Iowa has hosted the championships. The last time the event was held at Iowa was in 1985. Since then, the university has built a brand new $69 million recreational center where the events will be held. After talking to a couple of swimmers on the Big Ten teams, it seems everyone is loving the new natatorium. In the 35 years that the Iowa program has existed, 13 women have claimed a Big Ten championship title. The team's highest finish in the championships was in 1986 when Iowa tied for second. Six of the Big Ten teams are ranked in the top 25 for both the men and the women making this one of the most competitive conferences in the nation. Head coach Mark Long said we will see Olympic level talent. Each team has at least one qualifying athlete for the NCAA championships. The event will be all weekend, so go check out the Hawkeyes at the Rec Center. The Iowa women's basketball team went through more than one rough patch this season, losing consecutive games on three separate occasions. But Daily Iowa TV's Ian Martin tells us why with three games left, these Hawkeyes aren't hanging, hanging their heads anymore. On a five-game win streak with just three games left to play, the Iowa women's basketball team's spirits are high. Anytime 
you're winning games, there's an extra hop in your player's step. I think that coaches have to do their best job when things aren't going well. And I think their job becomes easier when things are going well. So, you know, is it easier to get them motivated and excited to come into practice right now? Certainly. You know, knowing that we kept, we kept telling ourselves we're right there and obviously we're getting frustrated with the losses, but we weren't playing bad by any means. I don't think it was just, you know, little things that we weren't making go our way. But it's been a roller coaster season that hasn't been all ups for the Hawkeyes. Um, we're, you know, we're, we've been excited. We, we know we've been really close all season. We haven't really, I mean, we've had some pretty, we've had some not bad games, but games we should have won. We know that, but we were there the entire time. You know, we haven't been blown out, I would say, by anyone. At Carver Hawkeye Arena for Daily Iowa TV Sports, I'm Ian Martin. And you might have seen there, freshman Sam Logic was named Co-Big Ten Player of the Week, as well as Freshman Player of the Week. During two Iowa wins last week, the point guard averaged a double-double of 18.5 points and 11 rebounds per game. A legendary University of Iowa coach died recently, the athletic department announced. Former Iowa women's track and field coach Jerry Hassar died unexpectedly on February 4th at his home in Rhode Island. He was 61 years old. Hassard coached at Iowa from 1975 to 1995. He was named Big Ten Coach of the Year in 1989 and coached 44 Big Ten champions. So sad news, Brad and Allie, for the Hawkeye track and field family. Yeah, Alicia, definitely an unexpected loss for the track and field community. But before we leave you tonight, we want to show you this. One woman received something more than just chocolate and flowers from her boyfriend this Valentine's Day after her boyfriend offered his kidney. Terry Lee spent his Valentine's Day in Vanderbilt Hospital after he found out that he was a perfect match for his girlfriend who suffers from lupus. The surgery was conducted yesterday. It wasn't like a hard decision at all because I wanted to be with her and you know, I wanted her to have a, a normal life. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Thursday's print version of the Daily Iowan. Read about how part of the field house is being demolished to make room for a new section of the Children's Hospital. Plus, read about how a family of former U of I professors is suing the UIHAC for not diagnosing his colon cancer fast enough. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Thank you.